So I'm Erica Slocum. I'm a PhD student in the Black Studies Department here at UMass. I currently work as the Director of Interpretation uh, and Visitor Experience at the Harriet Beecher Stowe Center uh, in Hartford. I kind of came to art in a particular or a peculiar way. Um, originally, I started doing art to kind of relieve myself from stress as I was working on a degree and working full time as a social worker in Holyoke. <clears throat> and it just was like a release, right, for all the stress of life. And um, slowly, as I learned more about Black experience and Black history, I started to kind of frame my art around the things that I was learning. So I mostly use uh, acrylic on canvas. Um, some of my art, piece, art, um, art pieces are mixed media. So I like to use books and uh, images um, from life to kind of, um, I don't know, like, to show layers and dimension of um, some of the experiences that I've had. My dissertation is called Reliquary of Blackness, and it focuses on creating Black archives, um, mostly using oral histories and community narratives um, and community archives. So I realized that um, some of the spaces that I was working in, uh, particularly in Holyoke, the archives weren't vast as far as it was related to Black experience and culture and Black lives and Holyoke. And so um, we built an archive based on some of the community members' family archives. And so I really use, um, or I, I like to focus on oral tradition and folks telling their own story about the places that they live in. Part of the thing that I love about my work is that I like to get folks' experiences in their own words. So. We can do research, right? Um, we can look at primary resources, um, we can look at the art, but to have someone um, specifically say, here is my experience, here's what, um, you know, here's what I thought I did, here's what I thought I experienced, and then kind of matching that up with what the archives tell us, what newspapers tell us. Uh, a reliquary is a container for um, holy relics. And so my thought for using the term reliquary of Blackness is because I think that Black history is sacred and should be treated as such. And so in order for us to um, create these, you know, reliquaries of Blackness, I think that, as I said, we have to work with folks from their experience, from their perspective, um, outside of our academic lens. The way that I think about my work is how do I, for myself, for my children, for my community, um, show this experience of like blackness, right? Um, so that's black joy, that's black pain, um, that's black labor, right? And so where those things converge, I think that, um, I think it was uh, Paul Robeson who said that artists were the gatekeepers of truth, right? And so I think that when I think of all of the knowledge that I'm gaining, um, I consistently think about how I can use my art to, to tell those stories, to bring those stories out into the world in a way that invokes questions, um, invokes emotional, mental, and physical responses um, in a way that, you know, creates conversation about like, why did you create this piece? Or what does this piece mean to you, right? Um, so that folks start to talk about like the history of it all. Wisteria Harris is a municipal museum in Holyoke. Um, so it largely focuses on, uh, currently focuses on the, the history of the Skinner family um, who owned the house, so it's a house museum. Um, but I think that one of the things that they're moving towards is um, telling more of a community-based history um, in that space. Um, and so it's right in the middle of Holyoke on Cabot Street. So it's, it's the perfect space to kind of like move things outside of, um, or move things from that point and out um, into the community. And so the exhibit um, is called Abstract Revelry. <laughs> um, and it really focuses on like my art um, attached to uh, music. And so, um, my hope is that uh, the songs that kind of 
um, what is the word, inspired me to paint the paintings or songs that I listened to while I was creating them, that folks will have the opportunity to have like that kind of multimedia um, interaction or experience. So they'll see the art and they'll hear a song or maybe they just listen to the music. And again, it invokes that feeling of, I see where she's going. <laughs> I see the story here. There's a song called e um, by artist um, eBay and it's called um, River. Um, and so that is like a very like spiritual kind of hymnal song um, that, um, you know, the artists themselves, they're very much inspired by um, African spiritualism and their, um, their ex life experience of being like European and Cuban um, descent. And so a lot of their music is very like, again, like hymnal, um, but really invokes this like emotional feeling. Um, so the, the painting is called The River and it's an image of my rendition or my representation of Oshun with the twins Ibei. Um, and they're like standing in a river with the mountains behind them. Um, in the sun, um, so yeah, a really beautiful piece. I have some <laughs> uh, pieces that are inspired by Coltrane, um, by Solange, Rihanna, um, and so I think that it's an eclectic, um, I'll say it's an eclectic experience, right? Because uh, all the music isn't, you know, soul or jazz. There are some like rock pieces, others are inspired by country music. Um, but I think that is like true for our experience, right? Of like how black folks um, use music and art to really, again, tell their story. I think that I'm a visual learner. So I always think about like how, how different people are learning and how different people are taking in information. So like, even for my dissertation, um, there's a graphic um, novel about my research that I made. Um, we recently did a short documentary about the process um, in Holyoke and the research in Holyoke um, and the individuals in Holyoke. And then um, this fall, I did like a podcast, a mini podcast about a section of the history. So um, as an artist, I'm always thinking about when I'm learning something in history that folks might not have access to or um, they might not interact with because they're workers or, you know, they don't have time to, you know, focus their energy on um, reading books, right, um, because they don't have the time. I just think about, like, how can I bring the things that I'm learning and the experiences that I'm having um, visually out into the world, again, so that people ask questions and if and when they have time, I can say, you know, a good book to read out of the house of bondage, or, you know, um, I can't wait to call you my wife, which are all, you know, black books written by black, you know, black women in particular. I really like Kara Walker um, and her kind of like antebellum um, uh, contemporary pieces um, where she explicitly is interrogating um, like the history of black experience, particularly around enslavement. Um, but um, I love Faith Ringgold. Um, um, I'm sorry, cause I can't, I can't think of like visual artists. A lot of it I think is um, again, like multimedia, right? Like you have your Coltrane, you have um, Archie Shepp, right? Um, Maya Angelou, Toni Morrison, Sonia Sanchez, right? And like how folks really, I say, regardless of the medium, really put their whole heart into um, highlighting the experience of, you know, black motherhood, you know, black womanhood, you know, uh, blackness in, in this space. So first I'll say that Black History Month is every month. <laughs> and True. I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, especially because as black people, we don't get to take our blackness off, right? It's with us 365, you know, 24 seven. Um, but I think that um, the art has always been a way 
for us to express to the masses what's going on, um, what our struggles are, um, what our our light is, right? Um, and really being able to um, tell the truth about what our, our experiences are, right? Um, for good or for bad. Um, I love um, <laughs> Nelson, um, Nelson Stevens and his work that he did here. So he was a professor here at UMass in the Black Studies Department. Um, and he worked with his students to create murals in Springfield um, about like Black life and Black joy. Um, you know, they had a magazine where it was, it was like poetry and visual art. And, you know, these are Black students from the Black Studies Department, like writing and creating. Um, um, uh, Bracey and Sonia Sanchez um, and, and um, Smothers um, had a, um, a book called SOS, and it's about the Black arts movement. Right. And just thinking about and looking at like, I think we can't separate the art from the the art and the culture from the history. Right. Because so much of the history informs the art and the art in, in, informs the, the history making. Right. Um, and again, I think that Black History Month is important um, for us to have an opportunity to really um, delve into what it means to be uh, Black in this country, Black in the diaspora, you know, Black around the world, right? Um, and I think that was, you know, Carter G. Woodson's hope with creating the Black History Week, right? It's like, what are our experiences and how do we, you know, draw attention, um, draw, draw attention to the intent of like Black experience um, in, in the spaces that we occupy? I hope, what I hope for the future of Black art is that we're able, Black art and Black history, is that we'll, we're able to interpret what our art means for ourselves, right? Without the white gaze, um, that um, we'll be able to have like, you know, free spaces where we can, you know, create and live, um, thinking about, you know, communal styles of um, creating that, you know, we had in the 70s and 80s, right? Um, but yeah, I think that it, it is us being able to not be burdened by, um, you know, a workforce and a labor force that, you know, encumbers our creativity or um, doesn't allow us to, you know, freely create and um, express ourselves, again, without that, like, white gaze, right, that we'll just be able to exist in the world of art in whatever form that takes. Um, in a way that is real and genuine for us. So right now, like I said, I'm the director of interpretation at Harriet Beecher Stowe. And so one of the things that I'm really excited about is reinterpreting um, Harriet Beecher Stowe's house um, from a Black perspective. Um, and so really thinking about the people who influenced her, right? Because she didn't write that book alone. Like she put pen to paper, but a lot of those experiences that she drew from um, were experiences that Black folks had already written down and or, or, you know, spoken about. And so I'm really interested in looking at the constellation of Black humans who influenced Harry Beecher Stowe's work. Um, and so that'll be post-dissertation and also like while I'm writing the dissertation. Um, but like my big dream is just to be able to like paint. Um, I would love to be able to have like a gallery um, of my artwork and of others' artwork um, because one of the things that I'm really big on is community, right? Particularly Black community because I realize that none of anything that I'm doing am I doing alone, right? Like I have a community of people behind me that enable me to um, do the work that I'm doing that, um, you know, are willing to collaborate with me on this work. Um, and I think that it's like really important for us to be able to have those spaces. Um, and so when I think of like reliquary and blackness, it's not just creating like the historical archive, um, but also how do we think about like um, the past, present and the future um, in a way that is, uh, I wanna say self-sustaining, but just sustaining um, and sustain us.